Hello, 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 everybody. So I guess we could start this off by the show must go on, right? <laughs> if you didn't see on my Instagram stories, um, I have renovations going on downstairs and I'm never quite sure when they're going to be working, when they're not going to be working. And uh, spoiler alert, they're working. Um, so I have my AirPods in, I have noise cancellation on, and hopefully the noise won't be too bad. Um, many of you kind of said it didn't sound that bad and that I should still go live. Um, and honestly, I'm not sure when I would be able to reschedule it. Um, and yeah, I guess it is what it is, right? It's all part of the process, all part of the process. So thank you guys so much for joining me. Uh, Jen Turk is here. I am here for Get Crackin' on Christmas. We get together once a month. Um, and I share with you how I created my holiday card or cards that I share on the third Thursday of the month. Um, and hopefully it will get those creative juices flowing. Maybe you are going to start making your holiday cards with me throughout the year. I can promise you it'll bring you less stress in the fall uh, when things just tend to get busy, I feel. Um, you know, summer ends and then it just seems like there's just so much going on. Um, and then once Thanksgiving hits, you're, you know, it's, it's all downhill from there. So I love having a stack of holiday cards done. I like creating them throughout the year. So there's a little less pressure and it gives me a chance to try different techniques to use my stash, maybe some stuff that I haven't used yet, but I had to buy. Um, and it just gives me um, a little bit more enjoyment instead of that pressure creating where it's like in November, I'm like, oh my gosh, I have to quickly make, you know, 50 cards or whatever. Um, I don't personally enjoy creating with that type of pressure. I like pressure. I'm always creating last minute um, on deadlines, but uh, I don't know. I digress. But anyways, yes, Jack is here with me in the studio. He is putting up with the noise. That was another key, key indicator that I feel like if he's going to put up with the noise, one of my scaredy cats, um, that maybe you guys would be able to deal with it as well. Yes, I am here in my new studio space. Um, there's a lot still left to get done. You guys can see um, a little peak of the shelves over my shoulder. Uh, Chris got those hung for me last or yesterday, which was amazing. Um, and so yeah, here we are. It's probably good that Pam is listening on mute as she's putting her baby to sleep because uh, yeah, it's a little noisy. All right. Yay. Rita checked out my blog today for the project. She thought it was a fantastic idea. Thank you very much. Everybody says that it's sounding fine. So that's good. I'm hoping I did things correctly, so I'm muting the noise as much as possible. They're actually like cutting into the wall and putting the third window in. Um, if you guys saw the little peaks that I shared uh, downstairs um, yesterday of what it looks like so far, all the framing is done, all the rough for the electric is done, uh, but today they're putting in, I wanted a third window. Um, because we could. So why not put more natural light down there? Yeah, Jack is definitely enjoying the sunshine. And I also think he gets a little bit more reassurance that the noise isn't as scary if he's here with his mama. So uh, Nikki says she feels attacked for doodle bug hoarding. Please don't feel attacked. I, I'll talk to you. We'll flip the camera in just a minute. But I, I hoard all the doodle bug, you guys. So um, there is no shaming, no shaming at all um, in this of me explaining. I don't know what I'm doing over here. Let's see. Nope, that's not what I want. Try again. There we go. Um, there is no shaming. We, we, us crafters. Well, the problem is, um, is you fall in love with something like a doodle bug release 
and you know that it's going to go away. Like they're never, they're not going to reprint that release. So anyways, let me go ahead and flip the camera and we'll start talking about hoarding Doodlebug. So I have been a long time fan of Doodlebug. Um, way back when uh, I used to manage a paper crafting store and I just think it is so adorable. Everything about it. Everything about it is adorable. And do you want to know where, where they got me? My first love was the lopsided snowman, where the head was bigger than the body. That was it. That was it for me. It's all been downhill from there. Uh, hello, Brad. Hi, Jen. Hi, Lindsay. Some of my fun friends are here. Hello, Miss Brienne. Uh, yeah, there's still snow. This is weird. Like normally on the Cape when we get snow, which we got a decent amount last week, um, it tends to melt right away. But we've had such cold temperatures that it's kind of frozen over and it's not melting as fast. I'm not a fan. Not a fan. Um, yeah, Nikki says the problem is, is it's all so cute. So we'll talk about that in just a minute. But I shared this set of cards where I use my Doodlebug stickers to create these adorable scenes. Uh, there's pictures on my website. I have my website linked in the, pinned in the live chat. And then it's also in the description of this video. So if you're catching on replay, I also have the main supplies that I used um, linked in the description of the video as well is over on my website. And so this is stickers that I've hoarded. I don't know when, what year they're from. I've had them for a long, long time. I wonder if there is a year on them. Oh, this is 2021. So maybe that was the year this, this one came out. So I wanted to just show you guys. I used this large sticker sheet um, that they call Icons, cardstock stickers. And you can see how many are still left. And then I used the mini icons, which they come three sheets per pack. Um, and again, you can see how many stickers I still have to work with. Lots, right? Lots. But what does Jen do? And I'm sure I'm not alone in this and you guys can let me know in the chat. Um, but I have two backup sticker sheets here of the icons and another backup of the mini icons, right? We all do this, right? I'm not alone. I know I'm not. Um, and this is silly because I know that this coming holiday season, Doodlebug's gonna come out with wicked cute stuff again. And look how many cards. I got four cards with lots of stuff on them. And I still have so much left to work with. So. I am telling my future self, AKA the self that is gonna see the holiday line from Doodlebug this year, I only need to buy one, if any at all, honestly, cause, right, I still have all of this, but I'm only gonna buy one if I buy any, right? So I know we're all together on this. I know I'm not alone. Um, some of my fun friends that aren't into the paper crafting as me um, are probably laughing. But, and I also just wanted to point out, of course I have the six by six pad that coordinates. Of course I do, right? Haven't even opened it. Haven't even broken the seal. But of course I have it. And I have the sprinkle stickers, right? Oh my gosh, you guys. I have been good. I've, I've slowed down on my Doodlebug purchasing, so I'm proud of myself for that. But anyways, we are going to dive in. So I made this set here, and we're going to switch it up a little bit this time. We're going to make it a little, make some cards a little bit differently. Um, so we're just going to get started. All right, let's just get started. <laughs> All right, I love it. Thank you guys for letting me know that I'm not alone. I'm, I appreciate that. Um, yeah, their icon stickers come with a ton on them. I know, Alyssa, who, who was here telling me that ahead of time, right? Um, 
And Brienne says, but you never know how many pink narwhals you're going to want to use. I know. I know. And then Jen, Jen Nickerson said, no wonder it takes you so long um, to, I don't know if it says unpack or pack. The heart is hiding it up. But I have to say, I think I packed my studio fairly quickly in, in the time constraints that we had uh, between knowing when our move date was and how quickly it was approaching. But yeah. I know you guys. I know. This is this is the problem. All right. So we are going to start by stenciling um, some hearts. I'm using the Whimsical Heart Stencil from Honeybee Stamps. And I also love that I am using a stencil that can be used for many different things. This is not a holiday specific um, stencil, which I think is great to remind you and I think because I'm not creating close to the holiday season, I feel like I'm more apt to look at my other supplies in my stash and see the potential for holiday, right? Um, Alyssa said, of course, you're a paper crafter. It's what we do. Exactly. It's just like this reel that Shari and I did, right? It's just like that reel where we're like, we're card makers. <laughs> All right, so because I'm going to be stenciling, I'm going to use my Ranger Make Art Station, which I love. I'm going to put a little bit of Tombow um, removable adhesive on the back of some Distress White Heavy Stock, which is my favorite, favorite, favorite to use for ink blending. And on all of these cards, I did an all over background with the hearts, which I absolutely love. And I did some different color combos, which we'll talk about in a minute. But this time, I think what I'm going to do is just do kind of a ground, a foundation for us to build our scene on. So I'm going to drop the stencil down and I'm only going to stencil like three quarter ish ish of of the background all right um let's see i put them on cards and scrapbook layouts so that's awesome marianne yeah i don't scrapbook anymore so let's see um susan says oh my gosh enabled big time right now i'm a hoarder but this was not one of the things <laughs> well it is now susan and if you guys are lawn fawn fans lawn fawn and doodlebug go together so well so well um thank you miss brianne for linking things up she's always so great at doing that um let's see kathy says last year i don't have a ton of stickers to uh, oh, she, it seems like she gave them to daycare after moving and never using them. I think that's a great idea. <coughs> Alyssa says, yes, I thought of your reel with Shari. So, so true. Um, and Brienne is linking up my store as well, which I appreciate, my online shop, which there is delayed shipping right now, aka nothing is shipping right now. Um, we're hoping we're going to be able to start shipping again mid-March, but there's no, there's no guarantees when it comes to working with uh, builders and renovation. Um, hello, hello, hello. I know Lawn Fawn's new release is on Thursday. So exciting. All right. So my original cards, I used a Lawn Fawn celery stick, Lawn Fawn mermaid, and Lawn Fawn lobster. Now I grabbed mermaid thinking I grabbed my merman that I absolutely love. And I was like making my backgrounds and I'm like, why are these not, why is this teal not as bright as I'm used to? Because I use merman so much. But I have to say that mermaid with the little bit of gray tone to mermaid actually matches these stickers a lot better than merman would have. So lesson be learned, we need all the different shades of teal as well, because you never know what you're trying to match. So we're going to start, I am going to do, um, let's see, let's start with celery stick. And I am going to ink blend 
We'll do a little bit of celery stick on the top here. I'm being very brave. I should not be brave because I'm live on camera. So I should definitely put a barrier so I don't accidentally get a line. So I'm just going to use a little post-it tape. I don't know why I thought I was going to be brave like that. Especially when I'm live and I'm chatting with you guys and I'm not paying attention as well. I 100% would have ink blended right above that stencil, which we would have figured out a fix because that's what it's all about. Um, but yeah, Karen's confessing that she hoards all the doodle pops. Oh, yes, I have those too, Karen. Don't you worry. <laughs> those make a great card, quick card. I tell myself every time I buy them, but then I don't use them. Um... Hello, hello, Janet. Thanks for joining for the first time. If you're a new follower, I appreciate that. So I did a little bit of celery stick, and then I think we're going to put a little bit of mermaid at the bottom. I'm going to look for my cloth. Jack was facing me. Now he's giving me his back. At least he's not running away. The kitties usually don't like to be with me when I'm live. But again, I think he's looking for a little bit of reassurance that nobody, no monsters are going to come get him from downstairs. Yes, Brienne says, super handy ink pad holder, the ink stand. Love it, love it. And Brienne, if you actually want to link to the ink stand instead of me so people can get them faster, I am totally on board with that. Oh, this is so pretty. So I'm using Lawn Fawn inks, um, which are dye-based, water-based inks. And because they are dye-based, they are uh, translucent. And because they are translucent, when we blend into another color and over another color, we get this really pretty mix of the two colors. Um, which I absolutely love that. So this is why I love to use my Lawn Fawn inks and my regular Distress inks for ink blending. And you'll find I don't really use my um, Distress Oxides very much for ink blending because I like the translucent property of the regular dye-based. So yeah. Aw, thanks, Jen. If uh, Dale is watching now, hello, hello, that's her mom. So see how fun this is, you guys? So now we're going to have this little line that we're going to be able to build our scene. So I'm going to keep going. I'm going to try to get four backgrounds done, or maybe let's just do three. Let's just do three. I'm going to do three backgrounds fairly quickly. Um so that we can get to get to the fun, get to the doodle bug, right? Um, so I'm gonna use a little bit of isopropyl alcohol in a mister bottle. And we're just going to wipe this clean. This is gonna take any of the previous ink color away. I like to use the uh, isopropyl alcohol because it dries right away. So I don't have to worry about my stencil being damp or waiting for that dry time. All right. So again, I'm not even measuring, but I'm just eyeballing and putting my stencil, you know, less, less than half. We want it less than half on the bottom here. I go ahead and I put my magnets in place to hold my stencil. And um, I'm going to put my post-it tape down so I don't accidentally ink blend above that line. I know we've all done it. And I would have figured out some sort of magical fix if I had done that, but it's all good. Ah, happy to have you link to your shop, Miss Brienne. All right, so now I'm going to do a little lobster. This is such a great red. Love it. Not just because it's named lobster. And what I'm going to do for this is I'm going to do a very gentle hand, which is tricky for me. I share this a lot. 
since we're in the full on confessionals here, I'm going to have a gentle hand around the whole stencil. And then I'm going to have a heavier hand towards the bottom. And then we'll get a really fun little gradient of red on the bottom here. And I know this is looking super Valentine's-y, but that's okay. Once we add our holiday images, I think it's nice to um, have some hearts in the holiday season, right? Why not, right? All right, so I'm gonna pick this up. Again, I'm gonna reuse that post-it tape. So pretty. Love it, love it, love it. All right, and now we're gonna quickly do one more background, but before I do that, I definitely wanna get this red ink off my station. I am gonna use red again, but I'm gonna use, um, I think I'm gonna use uh, Mermaid first. So I don't want to get any mixture of my inks. All right. Yeah, that was the other reason why I didn't wanna reschedule. Um, I often am doing these Get Cracking on Christmases live um, on weekdays now. Um, I used to do them in the evenings, but it just was really hard schedule, like planning dinners and Chris having to, you know, be quiet in the house and all that jazz. So I do these often on weekdays now um, because I figure you guys can always catch the replay. But today I know is President's Day and some of you might be off from work. Uh, so that's another reason why I decided not to reschedule, even though um, it is super noisy downstairs. But you guys are saying you're not hearing it. I'm hearing it, but hopefully uh, my AirPods are doing their job and they are kind of noise canceling out that noise downstairs. Um, Brianne says, sometimes I feel bad for how much I refuse to re reuse red. It did nothing to deserve my hatred. I know I don't use red a ton either, Brianne, and you know that, but sometimes it's, sometimes it's warranted, right? And don't feel bad. There's other people that use red plenty. We don't need to be those people, right? Uh, let's see. Hello, hello. Thanks for popping in. Awesome. I'm glad you guys aren't hearing the noise. That's really amazing to me because I did my live last week um, when I was going over all the details for my upcoming virtual art retreat and I listened back and I could hear, but maybe I didn't have my settings correct. So I'm learning you guys. I'm learning because, again, there's, like I said, the show has to go on. I still need to do things here in my studio and share them with you guys. So we're doing a little bit of mermaid at the top. And then I'm going to do a little bit of lobster at the bottom. And it's going to make a very pretty little purple in between. So I know that's gonna make some of you guys happy. My purple loving fans, Miss Brianne, Jen, just to name a few. I think Susan's another purple loving fan, if I remember correctly. You guys are so passionate about your love for purple that I remember who you are. All right, put my brush away get my inks away. And I want to just point out, if you didn't want to stencil your backgrounds, you don't need to. Again, uh, Doodlebug has amazing papers too. And a lot of these are patterns that would make adorable backgrounds for the cards. I just kind of wanted to do a little bit of stuff with some ink, a little kind of stamping-ish stuff you know, because I just felt I needed to, I wanted to. So yeah, 
All right, so let me just clean this up real quick, but so pretty, right? So now we have these fun little grounds for all of our cute doodle bug stuff to kind of hang out on, which I'm very excited about. Very excited. All right. I feel like I'm getting in a good place with my organization in my studio with my drawers that I use all the time. Um, they were pretty messy and disorganized when I moved. It was kind of one of those projects. I was like, I gotta, I gotta clean out these drawers. I gotta clean out these drawers. Well, guess what? I never got to cleaning out the drawers, but moving and getting things situated has really helped me as I put stuff in, I'm really thinking about how everything is going. So I will be sharing more of my studio organization as I get more settled and feel like I have more to share with you guys. Um, yeah, see, look at all the purple love and peeps. I knew it. I knew it. Um, <laughs> Brienne says, I remember you said people who love purple really love pe purple. And I feel so seen that day. It's true. It's not a bad thing. You guys are just very passionate about your love for purple. Um, and again, I will just say you guys are super passionate about it. But back when I used to manage a paper crafting store, whenever there was purple things, they didn't sell very well. The people that loved it, loved it, but it also didn't sell out. So just saying, I said what I said. Um, Lori says, what are you cleaning your stencil and workspace with? I can never get red off of anything. So I am using, I have just a little mister bottle um, with isopropyl alcohol, rubbing alcohol. And I'm just misting it and I'm using my flower sack cloth. This is always in my lap. You can tell how loved it is. And that's what I'm wiping this down with. And because I'm using the isopropyl alcohol, it's cleaning the ink off, but it's also drying right away. Um, unlike if I used a water sprayer, um, I would have to, it would still be damp. So I'd have to wait. Uh, kitty alert. Does he spend a lot of time looking out that window? Well, Annie, I just moved here, uh, 19 days ago. So, uh, this is actually the first time he's hung out in here. Uh, this is Jack. This is my youngest kitty. Um, although he's my biggest, he's my big house panther. Um, and I think he's hanging out right now because he's a little nervous about the noise downstairs. There's renovations going on. And I think he's looking for a little bit of reassurance. He's kind of been following me around all morning as I was getting stuff done. So, but I hope he spends time with me. I'm actually waiting, um, for a delivery for another piece. So I will have a desk leaning up on that bookcase. Um, so I'm going to have an L shaped desk in here, which was one of my things, my dreams, then my new space is I just needed some more desk space. Um, and one reason is because I do share my desk space with kitties. Uh, Mr. Harley often gets up on my desk. And then Jack wants to be up here and it just became a fight in my old studio because then I also had piles everywhere and there just wasn't enough room for all of us. So hopefully with the L-shaped desk, there will be enough room for everybody. All right. Um, Liz says, oh my gosh, how did I miss the Creative Chick Mr. Bottle? You didn't miss it, Liz. It was a present for everybody that attended my in-person Creative Journey Art Retreat. Uh, Josie actually made them for everybody um, with vinyl, which I love her for taking the time to do that. And um, so everybody got one as part of a gift. Uh, spoiler alert, I do have some extras and someday when I'm unpacked, I will be adding them to my online shop. So watch those email newsletters. Uh, let's see. Yay. Awesome, Kathy. I love that you have your cloth on your lap and your alcohol spray bottle is in front of you. I love it. I love it. Okay. So now what we are going to do is, and this is kind of what I did um, when I was making my original ones, 
is I took a background. So I'm just going to take one of my backgrounds here. And I started to look at my stickers. And you guys know um, I love to come up with stories in my head uh, when I'm creating all of my lawn fawn cards. And so this is not much different than that. I'm just kind of looking and seeing what types of stories I can create with what I have. So, and the other thing that I did is, and I'm just kind of looking at what I have left and starting to, I did not pre-plan anything here, but I'm gonna try to stick to my original stickers because I'm trying to show myself that I don't need to buy multiple packages of the stickers. I'm reassuring myself that, that the world will still go on. All right, well, I think that I am going to use Santa on the snowmobile. Um, if you've been watching my Get Cracking on Christmases a lot, um, I did a snowmobile stamp from, um, I can't remember when I did it, but I talked all about how my dad and I used to snowmobile together. So I love that. Now this is a cardstock sticker. I'm just going to place it here. I'm going to be able to pick it up. I'm not smashing it down, even though it's sticky. I'm just kind of getting an idea of placement. Uh, I love this little sign. So we know we're going to put that on there. And then let's see what else could go with um, maybe we'll do a tree, get some green in there. And then I'm feeling, I'm feeling a snowman. I'm feeling like we need a snowman. I have to be careful though. See how this snowman has a white border and this Yeti has a white border because I didn't do an all over design. I feel like those guys are not going to show up as well but he has a lot of pink on him. So I think that will work well. And then um, I'm probably gonna stick a couple presents on here, but we'll get this started. All right, so this is a good start of some images. Let me just zoom in a little bit since we have the space. So what I'm gonna do is I am going to take some foam squares. Um, I think it's great to add dimension uh, to these stickers so that they won't seem so flat and stickery. Not that there's anything wrong with that, but I want them to appear to have more dimension. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use foam squares on the back. Um, I was teaching at Firefly Farms Creative Crate event this weekend, which was an online event. And I was confessing that um, I'm out of big foam squares. And by out of, it means that they're all very hard to get to in my garage because I do sell foam squares in my online store because I figure if you guys are buying a binder or a sweatshirt to make the shipping worth it, you might as well throw in some adhesives. And I didn't think that I wasn't gonna be able to access them. So I'm just using all the little foam squares, although I am in a little bit of a panic that I'm gonna end up running out. So I said, I'm probably gonna to have to place an order with Firefly Farm or Papercraft Clubhouse or Scrappy Chic and get some stickers, I mean, some foam squares. Although Scrappy Chic just shared their end cap of the new Doodlebug spring line so I'm trying to avoid them right now because <laughs> we know I do not need um, any more doodlebug, right? Uh, oh, thanks, Brianne, for tagging Josie. Yeah, Josie makes the unpaper towels that I absolutely love and I use to clean off my studio table. I actually use them in my house for everything but cleaning up kitty messes. Um, I don't want to get into like the specifics, but if you have pets, you know, the dirty messes that might happen. I still use paper towels for that, but I'm really trying hard not to use paper towels as much anymore. And so Josie's unpaper towels are so adorable. It makes like cleaning kind of fun, kind of as fun as it can be. So I don't sell the spray bottle yet, but stay tuned. You guys, once I get settled. 
I do have some extras that will go in my online shop. So if you're subscribed to my email newsletter, you will be the first ones to know when that stuff will be available. Um, and if I'm missing any questions, make sure um, that you guys just put the word question in the front so I don't miss any amongst the chit chat. I absolutely love the chit chat, but it's hard sometimes to see it all. And yes, Brienne just tagged Wash Ashore. Jen and Lindsay are here and they make the adorable necklaces out of washers. And everybody always loves their stuff when they see them at my in-person events. Annie says, okay, I feel so silly. First time I ever thought to create a story with my stickers. I love this idea. So Annie, don't feel silly, but I create stories with all of my critters and things that I use, which is typically usually lawn fawn. So now that I have foam squares on the backs of all of my images, this is my trick. Um, I don't want to peel the liners off and stick them onto my card because with mailing and stuff, all of these areas that are still sticky might press down onto my cardstock and then they're not going to look as popped up and as nice. So my trick is I am going to use my powder tool and I'm going to dust the backs of these stickers. And by dusting the backs of the stickers, all of that sticky residue is going to go away. So the only thing that will be stuck is the foam squares. Now, this is not a new technique at all. And I literally laughed. I actually am probably going to have to text my old boss, uh, Jane, who used to own the paper crafting store that I managed. I started working for Jane in 2003 and she owned a scrapbook and stamping store and her store was known as one of the Mrs. Grossman's Red Heart stores. And I don't know if you know what that means, but Mrs. Grossman's was a very big sticker company back in the day. And to be a Red Heart store, you had to have a certain amount of feet of her rolled stickers and so we had we had a bajillion feet of rolled stickers where people could come in and just tear off just one hockey puck or 10 hockey pucks and they were all different prices and they didn't have barcodes so we had to remember these codes for all the different prices it was a whole thing it was a whole thing um and this was a trick that was taught at like make and takes when we used to go to trade shows and we used to go to the Mrs. Grossman's booth um, is to add dimension to your scrapbook layouts. You would put foam squares on the back and then dust it with a um, powder tool. So this is not new. So I'm not trying to pretend like I invented this. I, ha I did not, but I'm bringing old back. I'm bringing old back. So, um, so here I am. I've got my tree here and now there's no sticky where I don't want the sticky and what will be nice about this is when I start to build my scene my stickers won't push back onto the paper and stick where I don't want them all right yeah some of you guys are remembering oh my gosh and we used to because obviously I'm on Cape Cod in Massachusetts we would have um, families come in that are on vacation with their kids and kids would like rip the sticker. It was a whole thing. It was a whole thing. I'm having a little bit of um, anxiety remembering, remembering the, the way it was. All right, so on my original cards, I die cut my backgrounds um, with Lawn Fawn's stitched, um, outside in stitched rectangle, the largest die in that set to get this really cute stitching. But this time I'm going to just trim them with my paper trimmer. I do both. I sometimes use the die and I sometimes trim. I just like having this little white border. Um, and honestly, it helps me stay accountable to put these on card bases. Um, which I will be doing. So yeah, so I'm just going to trim. Let's go ahead and just trim all three of these really quick. 
so that I have them all done. So I'm just trimming off approximately an eighth of an inch from all four sides so that it's going to be four by five and a quarter. And that's just gonna give the really nice little white border on the edge. It's just another little added touch. All right. Uh, thank you for popping in. And if you have to pop out, no worries. You can always catch the rest of the video on replay. I know everybody always has a lot of things going on. So I try not to keep these videos too long, um, but it is always nice to know that you can come back and watch it later. Uh, let's see, there's a store in Pigeon Forge, Tennessee um, that has a bunch of those rolls that you can't find anywhere anymore. Yeah, I feel like I might have heard Mrs. Grossman's is out of business now. I'm not sure. Um, and Karen says, oh my gosh, I've been doing it backwards. She's been using the powder tool first, then adding the foam. Yeah, then the foam doesn't stick well, Miss Karen. So there you go. There you go. All right. So now we are gonna start to build our little scene. And I think I was using this background. I don't really think it matters. Actually, I'm gonna use this blue and pink one. I don't remember what one I originally had. But we're gonna go ahead and start to build our scene. So now is when I will peel the liner off the backs of my foam. And I'm gonna to start to attach. And I know I can go off the edge a little bit, and I like to do that um, because I think it looks so cute, um, kind of breaking, breaking the um, frame of the card because I know that there'll be a little bit of space on the card base to have a little bit of overhang. And let's see, we're gonna put this little sign here because this is adorable, right? And so he's gonna go right here. Maybe we're gonna put this guy, hmm, maybe we're not gonna put the, maybe we're not gonna put the um, snowman. Although the snowman would look cute here. I would just have to take some of the foam off. All right, let's do that. So I want the snowman to overlap the um, tree and the sign. So I'm gonna take the foam squares off the top of the snowman. And what I will do is grab my glue tube and I will add a little bit of glue tube where those foam squares were. And then that way, wherever it hits on the tree and the sign, it'll have a little bit of adhesive. So fun, right? And then we're gonna add the snowmobile Actually, my dad might be watching today because he had today off from work. And I was like, if you're around, if you're around at noon, I'll be live. He sometimes likes to watch them when I am alive. So he might be watching. But here we are. We got Santa snowmobiling. I love it. And then what I did on my original set of cards is I took out a bunch of the snowflake stickers that were on all the sheets that I have, and I added those. But this time, I think I'm going to use some of these shape sprinkles, because why not, right? Oh, so Mrs. Grossman's has a website. That's good. Maybe they are still selling stickers. I don't know. And so I'm gonna tuck some of these snowflakes um, behind the stickers. And what's nice about this is it'll kind of make things pop a little bit. I didn't think about where I'm gonna put my sentiment yet, but I guess we will figure that out soon. This is just how my mind my mind works, you guys, in real life here. And I'm gonna do one more over here. All right, so now what I did for my sentiments is I took Spellbinders Hot Foil Plate 
um, and die set. So what's great about this is there's a ton of holiday sentiment options. And so what I did is I hot foiled it, um, you know, matte gold on white, and then I used my solid hot foil plate and used the extra foil to get the gold. So, and I just did um, two of each, okay? And then I can keep them in a little bag like you saw, and I'm able to um, use them, you know, on all kinds of upcoming holiday cards. So I love that. So you're probably gonna see me pull these out again in another um, Get Crackin' on Christmas. So I'm gonna use this Sending Wishes Across the Miles because I think that is so cute with the snowmobile. So I'm gonna go ahead and trim this one out. And I wasn't worried about my um, hot foiling not being straight because I knew when I got to the trimming part, I would be able to uh, straighten things out. So it looks a little funny right now, but stick with me. There we go. So we've got sending wishes across the miles and I'm gonna actually trim it up a little bit thinner now that I can kind of see, see it better now that I got it straight. And I'm gonna actually then use my scissors and just trim this into separate little sections once I get it figured out um, where I want my sentiments. But I think this is so cute. Oh yeah. So sending wishes. Kind of do this maybe. Sending wishes across the miles. Love it. So I'm gonna grab some foam strips to add those to my card. There is snow outside the window, you guys, yes. Um, I live on Cape Cod in Massachusetts. We don't typically have snow on the ground uh, for long, but we did have a fairly good sized storm last week and it's been really cold temperatures since. So things are not melting as fast as I would like them to. Uh, <laughs> Brienne says, Mrs. Grossman, she sent the picture, the link. How did I not know about this place? Well, Brienne, that's because you're a baby. And I mean that with love. You're just too young, too young to know these things. All right, we used to get invited to a really fancy party that they would have um, during the trade shows because we were a Red Heart store and we felt so special. It was really a lot of fun, a lot of fun. Okay, so that's one. Let me find my backgrounds, I've already lost them. Okay, here we go, here's another one. So I'm gonna look at my stickers again. I'm gonna stick with my same stickers. Now, you know what I want to do? Because I really want to use this Yeti, but I know he is just going to be lost amongst that white background. So I think what I'm going to do is ink blend up here with mermaid ink. So I'm going to block this off. And I'm going to get my ink blending, my blending tool out. and we're gonna add some mermaid ink to the top. <laughs> uh, Kelly says, I totally rate to, relate to the stress of that. I had to clean them up too. I wonder if you're talking about the stick, the rolls of stickers, Kelly. Oh my gosh. And so to kind of talk about history as well, um, Jane opened her paper crafting store. It was called Colorful Creations. She opened it in 1999. And when she opened it, there weren't a whole lot of paper crafting stores in the Northeast. So a lot of the um, displays to be able to display products 
were coming from the West Coast, like furniture and stuff. And that was so expensive to have to ship massive displays to, you know, display 12 by 12 paper, um, rolled stickers and all of that. We Down the road, there was a display store, um, I think in Connecticut on the East Coast and Florida. So we were able to later you know, in the life of the store, order stuff. But when Jane opened her store for the first time, her husband, Joel, built all this custom stuff to be able to hold things like 12 by 12 paper um, and rolled stickers. So our Mrs. Grossman's display was something he had built. And oh my gosh. Anyways, it was just, it's just funny. It's so funny. And I started working for her um, shortly after I moved to Cape Cod, um, in 2003. So, and I was a baby. I was a baby back then. <laughs> All right. Um, Liz says, Jen, are you, how excited are you for the new teal lawn fun cardstock? Seeing how it lays between mermaid and peacock made me so excited. Yes, it is such a pretty color. I love it so much. You guys know me. I'll take all the teal. All right. So now, now we can use this Yeti. See how much better he looks. He kind of pops off the page there. Um, and now I can use this polar bear because again, he was kind of struggling against the white and uh, maybe we're going to do a pink narwhal. Put a little splash of pink in there. I think that's good. And then I know I said earlier I was going to put presents on the other card, but I think this is the one I'm going to end up putting presents on. So I'm going to flip these guys over. And I'm going to add some foam squares. I tend to try to keep the foam squares towards the center on purpose. Um, so that way, when I get to creating my scene, um, I will be able to overlap my critters and characters. So that's why I'm kind of doing that. I, I'm doing that strategically, believe it or not. Uh, Melissa says, are you announcing any new Lawn Fawn classes with the release this week? I am, Melissa. I will have two Create With Us mini classes. Those are the free classes that I do with Kelly on Lawn Fawn's YouTube channel. So I'll have the details for those. And then I will have one Lawn Fawn online class for you guys to be able to sign up for. And I always make sure I have the details for all of that stuff on my website at release time. So it will help you guys determine what you want to shop and buy. So hopefully you guys find that helpful. All right. So I just dusted the backs with the powder tool. Okay. And now we're going to go ahead and start to create our little scene. So I'm going to put the Yeti down. And remember, you want to keep those liner on your foam squares until you dust um, the back so that those will stay nice and sticky. And then we're going to add a little polar bear. He's so sweet. And we're going to add the little narwhal in the front, which I think is fun. This little pop of pink. And you can kind of see how I'm able to overlap. Okay. And then I think on this one, it'll be fun to bring in um, some presents. So let's see what I have for present options. We've got this cute one. This cute one. Again, you guys, I'm still working with those original uh, set of stickers. So everybody say it together. Jen, you do not need to buy multiples of the stickers because one is enough. Everybody say it to me. Go ahead. <laughs> All right, so this guy I'm going to kind of stick over here. This is where I kind of have to think about where I'm putting my foam. All 
I'm still gonna dust this um, with powder, but I will still actually be able to um, add some wet glue because it's gonna overlap the Yeti a little bit. Oh, you're welcome, Carrie. Yeah, I was explaining uh, to Chris yesterday because um, it's been a little crazy here with the move and some other stuff that's been going on. So I'm a little behind in my class planning. I was actually taking pictures of all the Create With Us stuff this morning so I can't get my handouts done. But I know how helpful it is for you guys, especially when there's a big Lawn Fawn release. Um, you know, you want to you wanna buy it all, but you can't buy it all. So it's helpful to know maybe what I'm teaching with um, to help you budget and figure out what you want to do. So I try. I try. I try. I love it. My super type A, super organized friend Jen here is screaming at me that I don't need to buy multiples of stickers, that I have enough. Thank you, Jen. Thank you. Um, and then Jessica says, Jen, you definitely need more stickers, Janabling. I love it. Thank you. See, I know I'm among friends. I know. Look how cute overlapping the presents like this. Love it. And I like that this is just kind of bringing in um, a little splash of color as well, some different colors. Um. And Linda says, doodle pops are like chocolate. One is never enough. I know, right? I feel like doodle pops, doodle pops, you kind of do need more than one because you use them so quickly. It's like a one and done. It's way different than the sticker sheets. So I'm just saying. Just saying. I actually really like this little present stuck right on the polar bear like that. All right, look at that. How cute. All right, before I put anything else on here, I am going to determine what sentiment I'm going to use. And then I might put some little hearts up here. But let's see. Ooh, baby, it's cold outside. Done. Love it. Because these are all our arctic -y things. So you can see, I try not to hem and haw too much, you guys. Um, I feel like sometimes we overthink things too much. And that sometimes takes the fun out of it. So once I kind of think of something, I just go with it. I'm not going to be like, but is that really going to work? I just go with it. And then you just kind of work with it as you go. But if you like to, uh, you know, really think it all out, that's okay too. But... We all know we're going to make many more cards, and so there's many times that we will be able to um, do it in a different way, right? All right, so I actually liked that sentiment up high, so I'm going to go with that. I'm adding a little foam strip to that sentiment. And tuck it under the little narwhal horn. And now let's see what we have for some little hearts. Oh, yes. Can always count on Doodlebug and Lawn Fawn to have all the little hearts. So sweet. Look at that. And we do have one little step we're going to do to these at the very end once I get them on um, card bases, but I've got one more to build. Hopefully I am not boring you guys too much. Um, let's see. Um... <laughs> Jen says when she's helped me move three times, she knows how much stuff I have. I know. And that's why I didn't have friends help us this time. Um... Alyssa says, I plan my purchases around your classes because the classes help me use the stuff. I love to hear that, Alyssa. That literally makes my day. Kathy says, will Lawn Fawn post the Copic markers used in their intro videos? Um, they don't really post swatches, Kathy, but you can always pause the intro video and you'll see the markers that they're using. Kelly goes through and colors everything. Um... 
<laughs> I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. All right. All right. So now let's see. We've got one more scene to build. I kind of want to use these mountains because I think they're so cute. Um. Ooh, and I like that little North Pole sign. Hmm. And I like the snow globe. So let's see here. Let's see. Okay, let's just start with the mountains. Let's just, and again, I just kind of pull them off and gently place them. I'm not going to stick them down. And I kind of want to use this little North Pole sign because it's adorable. I don't know, this skiing Santa is adorable. Let's see. Yeah, I think I'm going to use him. He is so fun. Look at him with his little goggles. I mean, come on. Oh, yeah. Yep, I love it. Okay, so again, I'll just gently take these guys off and we're going to put foam behind them. Yeah, maybe I'll fit a penguin in on this one once I get seeing what I have for room. Because the penguins are cute, too. How's the noise, you guys? Still okay for you? Because they're having a fun time downstairs. I'm excited. I can't wait to go down at the end of the day and I get to see, like, what they've gotten done. And I'm really excited to see what it looks like with that third window down there. I'm so excited that even though we will be in the basement, we have all of that natural light. I just love light. <laughs> all right. Good, good, good. All right, so we're going to dust all of these with some powder. Maybe I'll just send Jane, my old boss, this video so she can watch me talk about Mrs. Grossman. She'll get a kick out of it. She will get a kick out of it. All right. Oh, good. I'm so glad you're not hearing the noise. Yay. Some people might have chose not to come to the live today thinking it was going to be noisy, but you'll have to let everybody know it wasn't noisy, that you had fun and it wasn't obnoxious. This is good to know because it's definitely going to be a few more weeks that they're working down there. And I'm sure I have other upcoming stuff that I'll be doing, right? Oh my gosh, this is so cute. I love those mountains. They're so fun. So the new house is good. I'm just anxious to uh, finish getting settled in. Um, we're kind of at a standstill right now until the renovations in the basement are done. Um, Chris's home office is going to be down there. And so we're just kind of not able to finish unpacking until that part is done, which is such a first row problem, I know, and I'm okay waiting, um, but we're excited to, to get more settled, you know? Um, but Chris put shelving up in my studio yesterday. You guys can kind of see a peek of it behind me, so I'm excited about that. I'll be able to unpack more of my studio stuff and get more settled in here so I can work a little bit better. Um, and we put blinds up and we're just chipping away, chipping away at the projects. How cute is that, you guys? So cute. Let's see if we can make a little penguin work over here. Um, yeah, let's go ahead and put this little guy. I'm going to put a little foam at his feet. 
and then we're going to overlap him on the mountain. So I don't need to dust it with powder because we kind of are using that sticky. I'm actually reinforcing it with some glue tube. There we go. And I feel like, I don't know what sentiment I'm going to use. Um, let's see. Let's see if there's a solid one. Oh, delivering you warm hugs would be sweet with this one. Or even just happy Christmas that I already have cut out here. Yeah, let's do that. That's cute. That's cute. Let's see here. And then I'm going to put some stuff up here. Probably some more, maybe some more of the sprinkle snowflakes. Um, let's see. Yeah, renovations are exciting. This is probably the, well, this is the first home I've owned and the first big renovation I've been part of. So it's super exciting. And he said, I had to rewind because I got a call, but Jen using the plastic piece in her trimmer to get the sentiment straight is genius. Thank you, Annie. I didn't even really notice that's what I do, but it is what I do. Uh, Annette says, loving this technique. I'm a sticker hoarder. I want to bust out my stickers and try this. Yay. I love that, Annette. Tabitha says, hi, I'm real late, but wanted to jump on and say I love the sample card you posted. Also, moving sucks, but it's also so exciting. We moved eight years ago, and they will be dragging me out of here. Yeah, Chris and I have said multiple times, this is it. This is our forever home. We're never moving again. <laughs> I'm like, I'm never packing again. And we had to pack so quickly. I wasn't able to clean out as much as I wanted. But as I'm unpacking, I'm like throwing it all away. I'm like, I'm not going to keep holding on to some of this stuff. So that feels really, really good. All right. So I'm adding some more of these little shape sprinkles because they're just so cute. Um kind of like little clusters like we would with sequins, right? And then we're going to put these on card bases because that's what I do now, you guys, or I try to do, especially with Get Cracking on Christmas. Um, and then I have one more little fun little thing I want to share with you that I'm going to jazz up uh, these cards with. So let's see. I forgot my card bases, but they're right behind me. So that's a good thing. No excuses not to be using card bases. If you're new around here. Um, I'm really, really, really bad at putting my cards on card bases. So I'm trying to get better because that was one thing when um, I went to send out my holiday cards. It was such a bummer that I had a bunch of cards made, but almost all of them were not on card bases yet. So to put them on card bases and to stamp the back with my hand stamped little stamp and then to fill them out and then to fill the envelopes out it was a very daunting task so I'm trying to get a lot better at adding my cards to card bases not to mention extra cards that I don't mail out to people not just holiday cards all the cards I share on my website extra cards um, I add to my website for sale in my cards for charity section, uh, my friend Josie, who works for me part time, she works on that for me throughout the year. Um, as we get a collection of them, she'll post them for sale. And um, all of that money collected for those cards is donated to my local animal shelter. So Josie also appreciates when I actually add my cards to card bases because then she doesn't need to do it. So it's a win-win all around if I actually put my cards on card bases. So sometimes I pop this layer up on my card base, but today I'm just gonna use uh, my big ATG gun and add them. And you can see how it has just that nice, 
nice little white border. Looks so cute. Um, Jen just said that we're not moving again unless we're moving to the Fun Friends compound. That's right. Yeah, we talk about in our later years of life having a compound together. All of us fun friends that hang out and live in our best lives those later years in life together. Look how cute, you guys. And it's only been, I would say, about an hour because it's an hour and 10 minutes. But I did a lot of chatty chat at the beginning. And look, I've got three cards done. So now let me just share with you the last thing that I did on my original set of four is I went around and added glitter. Hello, glitter all of the things, obviously. Um, I added glitter to some of the details on the stickers and on my cards. And I really think that this makes it come alive. Now, in the nature of keeping these cards, my, my thought process was because I'm not stamping and coloring and die cutting, these cards are fairly quick to make. And so keeping in that notion, I actually, you guys, use stickles. So everybody, please go tell Shari um, that not only did I use stickles, I'm going to give her a shout out. So I just go around and pick places on these stickers to add some stickles because it just jazzes these stickers up a little bit more so they don't look so flat. And I don't mean that negatively. If God forbid anybody from Doodlebug actually watches this video, I absolutely think I've already made it clear. I love everything uh, Doodlebug makes, but stickers can tend to have a little bit of a flatness to them. So by using the foam squares and using the stickles or the glitter, it really makes a big difference. It just kind of brings these guys to life. I'm going to stickles this little scarf. And then, of course, we've got to set this aside. I could use my Quickie glue pen and ultra fine glitter and add glitter as well. But again, I just thought this is a bit faster and um, kind of made sense for this style of card. So here I am, I'm going to put a little stickles on the ground underneath where the polar bear, the narwhal, and the yeti are standing and sitting. And then I think we'll do the bows on the presents. You could even go with your black lace pen and um, add some black lace pen to their eyes or the boots on uh, Santa and add some detail with that as well. I did that on my original cards. And then I'm gonna stickles these hearts. So cute, right? Look at that. I love it so much. All right, and then we've got one more to add stickles to, oh boy. Let's see. For the mountain tops, I'm going to actually just trace the snow instead of filling it in. I'm just going to trace the little scalloped edge. And then that way, this little North Pole sign, I'm going to fill in the snow. Santa's little hat is going to get stickles on the white parts. I like how it kind of separates his beard from his hat a little bit better. And then the white trim on his Santa suit. And then the same thing with this penguin. I'm gonna do the pom-pom on the hat and the trim on the hat. And because you guys know me, I gotta glitter all the things. I'm gonna do the base of the mountains here. So cute, right? I love it so much. So I can't really, I gotta be careful bringing these three 
into uh, camera here. Let me back up. You guys will see a little bit of my mess, but um, so we got these three cards done, I would say in an hour, because again, there's been lots of chatting. And then again, you'll be able to see the details of these four cards that I posted on my website. So look at that. Seven holiday cards for Get Kraken on Christmas, right? Yay, yay, yay. Uh, Jen Nickerson said, um, I was going to say you hadn't added glitter yet. Don't you worry, especially holiday cards have to have glitter. Brian said, I think every friend group should dream about living on a compound together. I agree, Miss Brianne. Um, Linda said, a bunch of friends have decided we will live in our own compound where we can bring our pets, cook, garden, and hang out. And between us, we have enough farmland. We can pick the prime spot. I love that, Linda. We're going to convert those, those uh, sea cans to tiny homes. That's a great idea. Shari just popped in. A little bird named Brienne told me you were using the beloved stickles. I am. Hello, Miss Shari. Um... And let's see, Linda says, Jen, we need this to go longer. Otherwise, I have to do domestic yucky stuff. I told my husband I was doing a class all afternoon. Sorry, Linda. You can go back and watch all the previous Get Cracking on Christmases. Um, and then Alyssa says, Shari enters the chat with stickles. Yeah, it's not a surprise. If you guys don't know, I'm obsessed with Prisma Glitter. My East Coast Fawny bestie, Shari, is obsessed with stickles. Um, yay, Jess just joined, but she's going to watch the replay. Love it. Thank you very much. So make sure you guys are subscribed to my YouTube channel and you're giving this video a thumbs up. I always appreciate that so much. And um, just remember, uh, Get Kraken on Christmas is always the third Thursday of the month. That is where I will be sharing my project with you on my website. And that is when I announce when I plan to go live. It is different every month. Um, it's not always Monday at noon or what have you. It really is just whatever fits into my schedule um, because, you know, lives are busy. So hopefully you'll be able to join me live or you can catch the replay. But the other thing about these lives is um, I love that you're all joining, but I really encourage you to use this time to start working on your own holiday cards. Um, make sure throughout the month, throughout the year, as you guys are creating holiday cards, feel free to tag me in your posts and you can use the hashtag. Hashtag get cracking on Christmas. I love, love, love to see what you create. It does not need to be identical to what I created, although I do have a feeling um, I maybe have inspired some of you guys to dust off uh, some stickers and, and more importantly, some doodle bug stickers. Um, they actually... I tagged them in my uh, Instagram stories when I posted last Thursday and they were commenting to me and they said that they loved seeing uh, me use up my stash. So, but just to be clear, you guys, I still have a lot of stickers of this two sets that I have. So remember, I'm, I'm, I made a lot of confessions at the beginning of this video. I'm no longer going to buy duplicates or triples because these are all brand new because Doodlebug is going to come out with an adorable holiday set this year and I'm going to want it, but I'm not going to let myself buy it because I still have all those and that's no fun. So awesome. Well, thank you guys. I know the snow is so bright. I will have a window treatment behind me at some point. You know, we're we're getting there. We're getting there. Um, and hopefully there's not snow here very often because usually there isn't here on the Cape. Um, but yay. Yeah, that's what I thought. I didn't realize it was President's Day when I scheduled this. Um, Mr. Harley doesn't give me those holidays off. Uh, Chris reminded me. He's like, you know, Monday's a holiday. I was like, no, I don't know. <laughs> Um, but thank you guys so much. Yeah, I totally blend into my wall with this shirt. I'm on brand, you guys, on brand. Yeah, Alyssa says I can make like 15 more cards with what I have. I know, I really could, without opening up the new stickers. 
Oh my gosh, crazy, crazy, crazy. Stickles, doodlebug, who am I? I don't know, Shari. I'm using, using the goods, using the goods. And on card bases. I know, I tell ya. I tell ya. Um, thank you guys so much for joining me. I really appreciate it. And if you're watching the live, I appreciate that as well. Again, I totally understand uh, that not everybody can make the lives, but I hope that you'll still plan to watch the replays. All right, you guys have an awesome Monday. Have a fabulous week and I will chat with you all soon.